suppose the big issue we've got today in the data centres is the metrics that have been around um, haven't really focused on the computational side of the data centre. They're purely looking at energy in and what the IT equipment is using. Uh, but they're not looking at the processing power or the computational power of that equipment. So if you were to take uh, processes from uh, say 2002 for example versus today, um, you're talking sort of uh, 8 or 9 gig gigaflops versus today uh, 70 or 80 gigaflops for the same server. Now that's a you know sort of seven fold increase in their processing power. In that sense if you don't take that into account when you have a metric uh, you're leaving yourself very open. So you could have a metric that says my energy in versus energy out from an IT perspective is really good. But in reality, the processing power of my data centre may be very poor. You really want to be looking at power in versus computational power and then obviously energy consumed by the IT equipment in that space. The biggest issue with uh, PUE is really it's looking at the power that's going into the data centre and the power being used by the IT equipment and as a, um, a ratio and I might have a one kilowatt server um, it's running at 100% efficient and I have a second server uh, running at one kilowatt theoretically 100% efficient however as indicated before the first one is only doing half the processing power that the second one is doing. So in a data centre, in terms of a PUE, those two units would look identical. Uh, you'd have a PUE theoretically of one if they were 100% efficient, the power coming in was 100% consumed by the IT load. Obviously that's not the case, it would be certainly less than that, but if we use that as an example. Therefore the metric that says my PUEs are equal in this case uh, is not correct because the second server is actually doing you know, twice the processing that the first one is. Therefore, that's the importance of CUPS, uh, compute units per second, because it is starting to take into account what the processor is doing in relation to the energy it is using. Um, and that is a very important metric. Um, Emerson has put CUPS forward once again as a discussion point. It's not to say this is the metric of choice and this will be the metric. Um, it's certainly out in the industry and we're starting to see the green grid as looking at the moment at various metrics that do take um, computational power into account because ultimately that is what the data centre manager should be looking for in terms of working out a metric, not just power in versus the IT equipment usage, it's power in IT equipment usage plus the computational power. The major difference between PUE and CUPS is that PUE is basically looking at energy in versus energy out um, at the IT equipment load, whereas CUPS is looking at the actual work being done by the IT equipment. So the biggest positive with CUPS is the fact that you're taking the energy in, the work being done by the IT equipment and then having a result based on that. And it should take into account obviously what the data centre is doing. So at the end of the day, if you're looking at PUE versus CUPS, CUPS is driving uh, the right thought processes in that what is the IT equipment doing in terms of work, whereas PUE is purely driving what energy is being utilised and that may be efficient, it may not be when you take in the work that the IT equipment is actually doing. CUPS is a good way of being able to have a metric that gives you a return on investment um, and what your operating costs will be down the track. Um, the spend today, certainly if you're looking at putting new uh, servers in for example, CUPS will take the processing power of that into account, not just the potential energy saving that the piece of equipment has um, up front, but it looks at the uh, processing power. So what it will do is, is give you an operational benefit down the track as well and a true metric to look at that.